Hi guys, this is Ilinka Vartik and today I'm sharing with you a fragment from the April edition of our monthly questions and answers project at pianocareeracademy.com. In this video, I will answer the following question posted by one of our members. My question is about playing intervals of thirds, particularly with fingers 3 and 5, which I find difficult to play simultaneously with the choric dynamics. Connecting legato is especially difficult and I wonder if you have any practice tips. The difference in length between the fingers and their weakness may be part of my problem. In One Fine Day, the piece for dessert from lesson number 19 from the beginner course, I'm just about able to play the first three notes in the left hand bar too, but not join them legato to the previous interval as you recommend. Playing simultaneously with the fourth and fifth finger is hard, but adding the B flat is really awkward. In spring, the piece for dessert from lesson number 29 for beginners in bars 1 and 2 in the right hand, I find it difficult to connect DC to the interval EG. I can play EG if I lift high but not always getting the right tone and simultaneous playing. When following DC, I tend to pause too long or lift my hand too high and the sound is harsh. I'm not sure if I should be turning my wrist so my elbow points out to the right or keeping it straight. Without seeing you play, I assume that you have problems with these thirds because you play them mainly from your fingers, without using the whole arm correctly in the process. The fact that you mentioned the different length and strength of the fingers, and also the difficulty of playing the two notes of an interval simultaneously, reinforces this impression for me. As I explain in all tutorials, to solve a problem, we have to break it down first into smaller and easier elements. I call this the magnifying glass practice method. And just in case you didn't apply it in a thorough manner so far, now it's the perfect time to start. If you work in a detailed, mindful manner, dividing the piece into smaller elements, paying extra attention to any difficult spots, this will save you lots of time and effort in the long run. On the other hand, if you simply play the piece through many times in a row, without isolating the problem spots, and working on them separately. Even if you play the piece slowly, this will still be a waste of time, will reinforce bad habits and mistakes. So let's use the magnifying glass method for the spot you mentioned from the first piece one fine day, and please don't hesitate to practice together with me. We start with this third interval from bar one. The important thing is to play it with the arm with one movement, not with separate finger movements. In other words, we begin by playing this third with the fundamental non legato whole arm weighted key attack. This is actually the secret behind simultaneous playing in this case. The same amount of weight goes into each finger and their individual length and strength are not so relevant anymore, you see? It's one movement, not each finger doing its own thing. At this point, I recommend watching my tutorials dedicated to acquiring finger strength and also how to develop sound evenness, considering that our fingers have different lengths, shapes and functionalities. Next, pay attention to my hand position and also the hand and arm alignment. Because the thumb is much shorter than the third finger, I'm not keeping my hand completely straight like this. I'm turning it to the right just a little bit, but without allowing this turn to cause any tension in my wrist. So when I practice this third non legato like this, which is always the first step, the wrist is fully flexible, relaxed. There is no tension in my elbow either. I take the needed energy from my back. The hand dome is rounded and the fingers are strong. Now, if we talk about controlling the sound intensity, you mentioned that you have problems achieving the needed dynamics when you play an interval. 
The sound intensity depends on the amount of weight that you channel into the keys and also on the speed of your key attack. The more weight you channel, the deeper your sound will be. If you play with less weight, obviously, your sound will be softer. Similarly, the quicker your key attack is, the louder the sound. And if you press the keys in a more gradual manner, as if the keyboard is an elastic surface, then the sound will be not just softer, but also nobler. It will have a better quality. So when you're working on dynamics, your hearing has to be in charge and you have to adjust all your movements according to its commands. So don't do it blindly. And then you'll reinforce these movements and internalize them through many mindful repetitions. Next, we will practice the chord from bar two and we will follow the same process. We play it with one arm movement. We pay attention to the hand position again. You see, we have a three-dimensional position here. Our second finger plays on a black key. So you have to orient your hand in such a manner that this feels comfortable. So you find that ergonomic position that works for you, also keeping in mind the individual construction of your hand. For me, I twist my hand to the right just a little bit, but still, I don't have a sharp angle here. The wrist is flexible, so play this several times. And if you use whole arm action correctly, you'll be able to play all these notes simultaneously. Don't move forward until you can play this without any tension, with a nice sound quality. When this chord is assimilated, return to the first interval, to this third, play it a couple of more times, then play the chord again. So we are really using the magnifying glass here. The next step in our practice process is to connect these two structures, but we will do it non legato. The non legato practice phase is very important, especially during the initial stages of learning. It protects us from finger only playing and the resulting tension, shallow key attack, lack of control and so on. In non legato practice, every note or interval is played with a relaxed whole arm movement, with a flexible wrist, a correct hand shape, with strong fingers. So this way we set a very good foundation. We learn the notes, we learn the correct fingering, we can also work on dynamics, we learn to control all the muscles involved in the process without complicating our life at this point with legato as well. So play this several times until it feels very good. Next is the legato stage. A good quality legato can only be done on a strong foundation of a non-legato weighted key attack. If you start with legato straight away, this can result in this isolated finger playing wrist tension and it will feel like your hand is cut off from its roots. The result will be, you see, poor coordination, lack of simultaneous playing, lack of control, random dynamics, random sound quality, and also this suspended type of key attack, which I call finger typing in piano playing. However, if you set that strong foundation first, it will be easier for you to make this connection, which I agree can be quite challenging for a beginner. So how do we do it? Obviously, first we do it slowly. We play the first third by using the key attack we have already discussed. And then for this connection, you have to lead with the forearm, elbow and wrist. So you make a little bit of a movement towards the left. And you can also make a tiny swing of your hand of these remaining three fingers. You see, so you're not just working with the fingers, but you're helping yourself with your arm and hand. These movements will be a bit exaggerated in the beginning. This will again protect you from that poor coordination that results from using your fingers on their own. But then as you become handier with this movement, you'll be able to play it in this simple manner and these movements will be minimal. It's also important to use weight transfer here. 
So first you will play with an approximate mezzo piano, mezzo forte. Then when you connect both hands together, you will already play the right hand with an approximate mezzo piano and the left hand piano. In the beginning it's okay to play with a deeper key attack. So weight transfer. You feel the arm weight in each strong finger and then just like in walking you transfer this weight to the other three fingers. You repeat this several times and if you experience any wrist tension or discomfort, return to non legato, play like this several times, remember the sensations and then switch to legato again. In time, once you assimilate these fundamental playing movements and once you train all the needed neuromuscular connections, you will be able to play with smaller movements whenever needed, legato straight away and also with a lighter touch that looks like separate finger action from the side, if obviously all of this is needed from an expressive point of view. However, this ease cannot exist without these preparatory steps that we have discussed without training the freedom and flexibility of our movements when we are still beginners, without understanding how the cycle of effort and relaxation works when using whole arm action, without learning how to channel weight into the keys, how to take advantage of the force of gravity, how to use the lever principle and so on. You can learn all these things by watching my tutorials dedicated to whole arm action and weighted playing. And now let's take a look at the second piece. Again, we use the magnifying glass and we follow approximately the same process as before. We start with non legato practice. And by the way, please notice that if we talk about the final articulation, there is no legato connection between C and this third. So here we don't even have legato, but of course, because the final tempo is quite fast here, you'll not have time to lift your hand very high either. So you'll have a little gap here, but it will not be a very big one. Now if we talk about the magnifying glass method, we begin by practicing this third and we play it with this weighted relaxed whole arm movement. So it's not two separate movements, one for each finger. It's one movement. This is one branch of the tree and these are just individual leaves, but you see, if they touch the keys at the same time, if there's the same amount of weight behind both fingers, regardless of their shape, regardless of their individual strength, then you'll obtain a very even sound and also you'll play the two notes at the same time. And if we talk about the length of the fingers, as I mentioned before, it's important to be aware of your hand position. So again, you'll not place your hand like this in this case, a twist to the left would be a bad idea because your pinky is quite short. Instead, you'll have this almost straight hand and arm alignment like this so that it's easy for you to touch the keys with both fingers at the same time while you keep playing with the arm. When this feels good, you can apply the non legato method like this with ampler movements for each note with plenty of wrist relaxation. And when this feels good, you can switch to the final articulation, which is this one. And again, initially it's okay, you see, to land on this third and to raise your wrist a bit higher so that you have some leverage here. And when this feels good, then you can reduce your and please notice, you asked me about pointing your elbow to the right. Yes, of course, the concept of leading with the arm, the concept of wrist navigation, always anticipating the layout of everything you play with your wrist, all of these are very important. Therefore, please notice, I'm not playing like this. Indeed, if you try to keep this rigid five finger position without adjusting your hand, then it will end up being twisted to the left when you play the third. And if you do this, it will be uncomfortable for your fifth finger to play properly. And this is a shortcut to very poor simultaneous playing. But if you use arm and wrist navigation, adjusting your hand for the new position, then this will feel very comfortable, very natural. 
final step here will be to voice the upper notes of these thirds just a little bit by channeling a bit more weight into the finger playing these notes. I explain how to do this in many lessons of our beginner course. During this entire process, only move on when the element you're currently working on is assimilated, is mastered. And if you apply this step-by-step -step magnifying glass method, progress is 100% guaranteed. Yes, it seems that this takes a long time, because I was talking a lot in the process and explaining everything. But if it becomes a habit and you apply it to all the pieces that you practice, you'll discover that it is actually a wonderful productivity accelerator and it will save you a lot of frustration in the long run. I hope that this helps. Take it one step at a time and enjoy practice. All the other video replies from this edition of the Q&A are available on pianocareeracademy.com along with the answers from all the past editions of this project which was launched in January 2015. By the way, the Q&A videos are only a small feature of our program. In the members area, you will also get instant access to many hundreds of detailed piano playing tutorials, including progressive courses that reveal the professional secrets of the Russian Piano School through my holistic approach to piano playing and lifestyle. To join our program, simply click on the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up Share it with someone who can benefit from it as well. And don't forget to subscribe. Have an inspired practice and I'll talk to you soon.